The next item of business today is the Members' Business Debate on Motion No. 15065 in the name of Christian Allard on Charlie Hebdo. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Christian Allard to open the debate. Seven minutes, please, Mr Allard. Thank you very much, President Officer. I would like, first of all, to thank all of the MSPs who signed the motion and all the MSPs who stayed uh, this afternoon uh, to listen to the debate. And, of course, all those who stood shoulder to shoulder in solidarity with the people of France in their time of need at first made this question uh, a year ago. Presenting officer, it is, the time, it, it is time for Parliament to reflect on the events that took place in Paris on the 7th of January 2015 at the Charlie Hebdo offices. We remember today the journalists, and I say the journalists because cartoonists are journalists as well as they are artists. We remember the police officers and others who fell victim to the attack. An attack on the right of free speech. The following day, more people died in a Jewish supermarket in Paris. And I understand that there are many terrorist attacks across the world that don't get the same attention in our media or in Parliament. Some of those attacks with many more victims are often unreported. But that day, the attack on freedom of expression brought together French communities in France like never before. Across the world and across Scotland, in Aberdeen, and I remember very well the committee, French committee coming to Aberdeen with a lot of, of Scottish friends. Uh, in Glasgow, under the rain, I've seen the pictures. And in Edinburgh, of course, in the capital. France has a great love for the work of cartoonists and a great love for politics, and that goes very well together. This explains the overwhelming reaction of the people in France on the day of the attack. Cartoonists are celebrities over there, invited to chat shows and news programs, listened to, read, and appreciated by all. This day, today, must be about them about cartoonists free to work in France and across the world. One of France's most popular of those artists, of those journalists, of those cartoonists, was, of course, Cabu, one of the victims. He served in the French military during the Algerian War, which was our Vietnam War. It did not stop him drawing. He drew cartoons for the army magazine Bled and other publications like Pilot. I was a great fan of Pilot when I was young. And it's a Pilot, it's at Pilot, when, where no less than the father of Asterix, and, and I, I know how much Asterix is loved in Scotland. For example, today in, in the National, there is uh, uh, Asterix speaking the mother tongue, and it's, it's great to see that this cross borders. It's at Pilot that uh, no less than the father of Asterix, René Goscinny, first employed Cabu. In 1960, Cabu co founded Arakiri magazine. What a name, presenting officer, Arakiri. And uh, the magazine did commit Arakiri. Uh, it got banned and was replaced the following day by Charlie Hebdo. We had lost another one of its founders a year before the attack, a great hero of mine, another cartoonist, Kavana. Arakiri, like Charlie Hebdo, respected nothing. As Kavana explained, we respect nothing because nothing is respectable. Let's be clear. Those magazines are outrageous, they're provoking, they're crude, sometimes obscene. They certainly do not appeal to everyone's taste, and that is very clear. They are not for everybody's consumption. Another victim on that day was 80 years old, Volinsky. From an immigrant family, just like Kavana, Volinsky was born in Tunisia uh, to Jewish parents. Drawing cartoons was his life, very political, but also very erotic drawings. Perfect for a publication like Charlie Hebdo. And yet in 2005, he was recognized nationally and awarded France's higher decoration, the Legion of Honor. Another victim was Bernard Verlac, or Tignus, as he was known. Uh, he had uh, his work published in many other popular magazines, which uh, I, I used to buy very often when I was young again, uh, like uh, Fluid Glacial. Uh, no surprise to anyone, uh, Tignus was a member of Cartoonists for Peace. 
Many more died that day in the office of Charlie Hebdo, presenting officer uh, Philippe Honoré, another cartoonist, two columnists, uh, Bernard Marie and El Zakaya, a copy editor, Mustafa Urat, two more people who happened to be in the offices of Charlie Hebdo uh, at the time, Michel Reynaud and Frédéric Boisseau. Uh, the editor, Stéphane Charbonnier, Charb, uh, as is well known, uh, died also that day, despite being under police protection, because they, they were under politi protection, police protection. This is how his bodyguard, police officer Frank Brassolaro, lost his life. Another victim was Ahmed Merabe, the policeman who opened fire on the terrorists. His brother later said that Ahmed was Muslim and very proud of being a police officer and defending the values of the Republic, of the French Republic. At this point, presiding officer, I would like to strongly state that this attack, like many other terrorist attacks in the past, has nothing to do with religion. It's about power, presiding officer. It's about men wanted power. It always is. A yawn, we are still asking how best to respond to terror. Charlie Hebdo has given me as the best response to this attack on free speech as we can get. They kept on doing what they were doing before. They kept on being outrageous, to mock and to provoke us all. To show no respect to anyone because none of us are respectable. In the aftermath, uh, the message came clear and came from the people, uh, not from politicians and not from the media. An attack on our journalists and our car cartoonist is more than an attack on free speech. It's an attack on us all. This is why we must not change any of our laws to restrict free speech or, or our freedom of expression. We don't need to like or even buy Charlie Hebdo magazine, but we need to make sure that we have the right to be published. Cartoonists are also taking a bigger place here in politics. Uh, from Steve Bell to Craig Moody, we might not always agree with them, but we need to make sure that the drawings are seen. Let's make today, the 7th of January, a day to celebrate cartoonists across the world. After this debate, the cross-party group for France will meet to have a discussion about this on committee room four, a discussion led by Scottish cartoonist Terry Anderson, who is in the gallery today, uh, and from Cartoonist Rights Network <coughs> International. Let's make sure that we keep intact our freedom of expression. And let me finish, presiding officer, with the words of another journalist, Antoine Leris, who wrote an open letter to the terrorist who killed his wife in the atrocity of the Bataclan concert hall in Paris last November. He wrote, no. I will not give you the satisf satisfaction of hating you. Presiding officer, let's celebrate today cartoonists across the world. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. I now call Elaine Murray to be followed by Chick Brody. Thank you, uh, presiding officer. Uh, and I We'd like to congratulate Christian Lahr on securing this debate. I hope I managed to sign it. I tried to check, but there's some peculiarity of the portal that you can only see the last seven days of, of uh, uh, motions that have been submitted. So I'm not quite sure what's gone wrong with that. It doesn't seem like a year since members of this parliament, and indeed people across Europe and beyond, were declaring Je suis Charlie to express our solidarity with the 17 people murdered, including journalists working at the Charlie Hebdo offices and in the attack on a Jewish supermarket. None of us then would have expected that just 11 months later, Paris and its people would again be the victims of appalling acts of terrorism and that on this occasion 130 people would be left dead. As uh, Christian Lahr said, the, the taking of life through acts of terrorism is appalling whatever part of the world it occurs in. But I think there is something about it occurring in a city which you know yourself, which really brings home to you the horror of the atrocity. I know Paris quite well myself. My parents had a good friend in nogent sur marne when I was a child and I first visited the city at the age of eight. It seems almost unbelievable that this city should be subjected to terrorist atrocity twice in 2015. Monsieur Allard submitted his motion in order to be able to champion the cause of free speech. And I think that is a very topical discussion because there's a lot of debate around whether or not D Donald Trump should be banned from the United Kingdom because of his hateful comments about banning Muslims from the United States. And I'm sure that all, if, if not all, certainly the vast majority of members of this parliament hope that Mr. Trump gets nowhere at all near the White House. 
The right to free speech, of course, is not absolute. There is a balance point beyond which someone's right to express their opinion will compromise the safety or human rights of others. Where that balance point falls is not always easy to judge. Charlie Hebdo is a satirical magazine, so I wanted to use my short contribution to highlight the importance of satire, political, particularly in political life. Christiana talked about the role of cartoonists. Now, the word cartoonist day, these days seems, tends to be associated with children's entertainment, but cartoons have a much longer and more serious history than Mickey Mouse and Tom and Jerry. Cartoons in Europe have for centuries been a medium for political comment and satire. My history textbooks at school was uh, illustrated by cartoons depicting Bonaparte and Wellington, Charles James Fox and William Pitt the Younger, uh, Gladstone and Israeli. Some of these would be considered to be racially offensive these days. Indeed, the depictions of Israeli were very racially offensive. So others were highly offensive towards the Scots and the Irish, for example, or towards pe people from Africa. But they did, these cartoons do give a real insight into the way issues were being perceived at the time. And although our attitudes towards what is acceptable and what is offensive change over time and with our, our, our increasing multicultural uh, aspiration, satire, whether using the medium of cartoons or TV, radio, etc., remains important, entertaining and illustrative of views and perceptions. Now, during the 1980s, 1980s and 1990s, I was a great fan of the TV programme Spitting Image. Uh, as many people know, it was a satirical puppet show which po uh, poked fun at politicians, celebrities and the royal family, which actually at that time was quite uh, novel. Some people, I think, were offended by it, particularly the issues about, around the royal family and the, the way in which they were depicted. But many of us found it highly entertaining and it was also a very pertinent commentary on the social and political issues of the time. I do sometimes wonder what its content might have been if the show hadn't been cancelled in 1996. And Mr. Flucklaw and Lambie Nairn had decided to interpret the activities of this legislator. Celebrities and senior politicians receive a lot of publicity and can therefore overestimate the importance of their own importance in the great scheme of things. Satire through cartoons or other media, to slightly misquote Robert Burns, is a gift which allows them to see how others see them. It enables us all to laugh at ourselves, our leaders, at the people we admire, and brings them and us all down to earth. Long live satire. Thank you. Chick Brody to be followed by Jamie McGregor. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, je m'appelle Charles. Mais aujourd'hui et puis tous les jours, je suis Charlie. Can I thank Christian Allard for bringing this debate to the Chamber today on this anniversary? Uh, last night I watched the very strong documentary about uh, uh, the Charlie Hebdo and subsequent adventures, uh, uh, terror adventures in, in, in France. It was extremely overwhelming. Charlie Hebdo magazine was published first in 1970, then ceased publication in 1981, then it was resurrected in 1992, being published weekly since then. The magazine offers and offered, like many good satirical cartoonists, offered a refreshing and different angle on issues of the day, embracing humour, provoking thought, employing satire, all wrapped in a parcel of creativity. In its website, it, it says it depends, uh, defends rather, uh, secularism pure and simple. Society is free of racism, but not segmented into ethnic groups. It defends universalism without crying peace doves and cultural diversity without snobs. Charlie Hebdo magazine, through its cartoons and writing, like fellow cartoonists and writers across the world, held up a mirror to society until that dark day one year ago on Wednesday, Jan the 7th, 2015, when men in black smashed or tried to smash that particular mirror. Satire's job, cartoonists and reporters' jobs, is to do that, to mirror problems and contradictions in society, not to solve them. These three men in black had problems, some of it caused by uh, peradventures in their countries, caused by others, and perceived as an attack on what was a developing but closed secular society. The presiding officer, the state of political satire in an open society uh, rather reflects the 
uh, tolerance and, uh, or the seminary tolerance that defines it. Less open society is shun criticism, overt as it sometimes is. You shun that criticism, especially pictorial criticism, as we see in our cartoons daily. And so it was with Charlie Hebdo on that particular dark day, but not for the first time. It had suffered two attacks, the first in 2011, and of course 2015 when 12 people died. But today and every day we shall remember them. Harold Rosenberg, an American philosopher, once said, and I quote, satire and irony are regarded as the most effective uh, source to develop a society, to understand a society. And once we have resolved the pain and the conflicts that we have today, and we will, that, those, that pain that exists in societies that spawn terrorism, then perhaps even then satire in the form of cartoons will be even then a bigger vehicle to debunk the leading figures in politics, in religion, and in other pseudo-realms of power. It was no coincidence that just as recently respect for that openness for example, was depicted by the flying of flags, for example, in Glasgow and cities across Scotland and across the world, and was described at that time as a challenge to a brutal attack on democracy and the freedom of expression. For it is a truism, a presiding officer, uh, as it always has been, that the pen, the pen is mightier than the sword in word, in, word, in drawings and in pictures. The neutralisation of terrorism against the Charlie Hebdo's of the world, the minds and the hearts of those who would wish to change others via the barrel of a gun, will find ultimately that that barrel has a pen stuck in it. The greatest honour that we can pay to those today, that those who lost their lives and those who lose their lives to intolerance, to eschew the division of communities along narrow cultural or religious lines is to support the right of satire and its vanguard of cartoonists in pursuing the creation within societies that allows and encourages debate and diversity. May their pens never run dry. Thank you very much. And I now call Jamie McGregor. Um, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. First, I'd like to congratulate Christian Allard for securing time in Parliament for this important debate. One year ago, on the seventh day of a new year, Paris, the city of lights, was darkened by a fearful atrocity. The first physical target of the attack was the satirical newspaper Charlie Edbo. The brutal murder, murder of 11 journalists and one policeman as he lay unarmed on the pavement and wounded shocked the world and was followed by another atrocity at the hyper cachet in another part of the city, the Ile de France, where four more innocent people fell victim to the lone gunman, Koulibaly, who claimed to be working in tandem with the Hedbo assailants, Sherif and Syed Kouashi. The physical attack on Charlie Hedbo symbolized an attack on the core freedoms we used to take for granted, freedom of speech and the right to express beliefs without fear or terror. These fundamental freedoms are the basis of our Western European culture. They are a guard against tyranny, and we have seen only too clearly what can happen when tyrants such as Hitler and Stalin can throttle that process. Mass murder, Holocaust, untold terror, and mayhem. The attackers, members of Al-Qaeda, ultimately failed in their aims because of the huge groundswell of outrage first among the people of France and then elsewhere, Je suis Charlie identified the groundswell with those innocents who had died and hopefully proved that the pen is still mightier than the sword. But these shocking events must impress upon us how fragile are these special freedoms and how important the need to protect our decent values that are central to our democracy and our way of life and to value and protect those who espouse them. Tyrants and terrorists alike, in many of the most despicable regimes, fear journalists, cartoonists, musicians, and filmmakers 
for exposing them for what they are. Satire is a most effective tool in eroding pedestals. Laughter is poison to a tyrant. Let us remember the anger felt by Hitler when he was lampooned in Charlie Chaplin's The Great Dictator. The Marx Brothers film about Fredonia was also in the same vein. And more recently, the interviewer which depicts events in North Korea is another in that vein. Indeed, growing up in the UK, I have been aware of the value of satire in lampooning politicians and other leaders through programmes such that was the week that was, Spitting Image, and long-established magazines like Punch and Private Eye. Even before this, in the 19th century, George Cruikshank frequently due George IV in a very unflattering light. Many may not like satirists, especially politicos, but these are brave people who are in the front line when it comes to challenging tyranny, and they run the risk of revenge attacks, especially by fanatics. We must appreciate their courage, mourn their loss, and support their replacement as bastions as part of our free world order. Especially, the Charlie Hedbo atrocity highlights the dangers faced by journalists across the world. It takes great bravery to stand up and be counted and to tell the truth. And that is never more important than now in an era which is seeing a decline in freedoms and an increase in terrorism. And unfortunately, it is likely that there will be further atrocities and massacres. But Christian Allard remembers rightly that the people of Scotland and all us MSPs stood shoulder to shoulder following this massacre. And all of us, we must continue to behave in this way with courage in the face of this dark threat to freedom, decency and a way of life to which countless people all over the world aspire. Thank you. Thank you. Can I now invite Fiona Hislop to respond to the debate? Cabinet Secretary, seven minutes or so, please. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, I'd like to thank Christian Allard for securing the debate and for what I thought was an excellent speech. Um, and I thank all the members who contributed to what has been a very thoughtful reflection on the horrific attacks on the Charlie Hebdo offices in Paris. A total of 17 people were killed in three days of attacks a year ago. That also uh, targeted a Jewish supermarket and police. Uh, since the attacks in January, there have been a number of other incidents in February, April, June and August, and finally the murder of 129 people in November. Charlie Hebdo's offices had already been firebombed in 2011, and other magazine of, uh, offices in Europe had also been threatened. But the attack in Paris in January last year shocked the world. Within hours of the shootings, the hashtag Je suis Charlie went viral, rallying millions behind the plight of free speech in opposition to brutal killings. The horrific crimes prompted an unprecedented showing of solidarity with demonstrations and vigils held around the world. On the 11th of January, about 2 million people, including more than 40 world leaders, met in Paris for a rally of national unity, and about 3.7 million people joined demonstrations across France. Here in Scotland, the First Minister spoke to the French Consul General after the attacks and wrote to President Hollande to convey Scotland's condolences to and solidarity with the French people. She made a statement during First Minister's question time and flags flew at half-mast on Scottish Government premises and here at Parliament. Rallies were held in Aberdeen, Edinburgh and Glasgow. I signed the Book of Condolence at the French Consulate and attended and spoke at an event organised by the French community outside the French Consulate in Edinburgh. With today's debate, we signal that we continue to stand shoulder to shoulder with the people of France, united in our condemnation of the atrocities. We are deeply saddened by the tragic loss of life, but at the same time, we're absolutely steadfast in our defence of the fundamental freedoms that we all cherish so much. The attacks were intended to spread terror and to drive a wedge into communities and societies. However, the response has achieved the opposite to what the terrorists intended to. In the aftermath of the attacks, the Scottish Government has been clear that we stand together with the Muslim communities in expressing our condemnation. 
And following the Charlie Hebdo attacks, the Scottish Arab Federation issued a statement in which they publicly declared their condemnation of the terrorist act. And they highlighted that the vast majority of Muslims are horrified and sickened by the attacks, and that Islam as a religion advocates tolerance and freedom of belief. Furthermore, they point to the fact that Muslims and other ethnic minority groups are very concerned about the rise of resentment against immigrants in many European countries. And let me quote from the final section of the Scottish Arab Federation statement. In order to eradicate terrorism, the fight against it must not be confined to security and military measures, but should include political, socio-economic, ideological and cultural factors. Mutual understanding is essential to build confidence and avoid unreasonable behaviour. Constructive communication helps to overcome prejudice and shared media uh, and slanted media reporting. And establishing dialogue through robust channels will go a long way to towards diff diffusing tension and maintaining a peaceful and calm existence for all. And I think the debate today has echoed many of those sentiments. A peaceful and calm existence for all is a cornerstone of our diverse and multicultural society. Terrorists want to undermine the values that we share. They aim to damage community relations. And it is clear that terrorism is, as uh, Christian Allard pointed out, is about a pro propagation of fear and a provocation of hate. An important challenge for us is to work towards creating cohesive and resilient communities within which the terrorist messages will not resonate. With today's debate, we affirm this Parliament's commitment to a modern, inclusive Scotland, which protects, respects and realises internationally recognised human rights principles. The assault on the Charlie Hebdo offices was an act of terrorism and also an attack on the freedom of speech. It was Benjamin Franklin who said that whoever would overthrow the liberty of a nation must begin by subduing the freeness of speech. And the principle of freedom of expression is a centrepiece of the European Convention of Human Rights and the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. It was a fundamental feature of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, adopted in 1948 in response to the conflict and catastrophe brought about by the dictatorships of the 1930s. The power of caricature and satire has long been recognised. It was understood in ancient Greece and in Rome and is still feared by tyrants and dictators. Amnesty International's current Right for Rights campaign highlights the case of political cartoonist Zulkifli Anwar Ulhaki, also known as Zunar, who is facing a long prison sentence in Malaysia for seditious, uh, so-called seditious cartoons. Such cartoons exist to highlight injustice and to make the case for change through challenge and ridicule. It can sometimes be hurtful as well as thought-provoking. But in a modern democracy like Scotland, there is more than ample room for legitimate commentary through the medium of cartoons and caricature. Those who seek to influence the views and opinions of others in our society need to accept that their own views are also open to challenge. A compliant reverential media is not compatible with modern democracy. Democracies thrive in the face of challenge through freedom of expression. And as we've heard in this debate, Elaine Murray talked about the historical context of political satire and cartoons. Chick Brodie spoke eloquently about the modern context and relationship of democracy satire and the power of the pen. And Jamie McGregor has reminded us of the importance of the freedoms we value and how we can't, um, uh, you know, we can't and shouldn't take uh, these for granted. Of course, in a respectful dem democratic society where human rights are valued, there are also limits to express views which challenge and provoke. Giving of gratuitous offence is not a right and satirical attacks motivated by hatred and prejudice step over the line of what is acceptable. Indeed, international treaties, including the ECHR, recognise that the exercise of freedom of expression brings with it duties and responsibilities, not least of which is the obligation to respect the rights of others. And that includes the right of other people to hold views with which we may ourselves fundamentally disagree. In closing, I want to refer to the motto which appears on the coat of arms of the city of Paris, which shows a, a ship at sea. The motto, and I reflect on my higher Latin, uh, is flut fluctuat uh, nec mergitur, which translates as, she is shaken by the waves, but does not sink. 
This century-old mot motto had a surge in po popularity and is used in social media as a symbol of Paris resistance in the face of terrorism. And whilst we are all shaken by the terrible events in Paris, we continue to stand united with France in the fight against terrorism. Thank you very much. Many thanks, Cabinet Secretary. And that concludes Christian Allard's debate on Charlie Hebdo. I now suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30pm.